So let's look at this question, which says, uh, so it says all the questions in this paper are based on the software requirements of an image library, which is one thing that freaks people out where they use one thing to ask you everything. So like in this case, the question starts off with an image library, question number one, you've got question number two, they are still talking about images, you've got question number three, they are still talking about images, question number four, images, and they're like, eh, when is this gonna stop? And it won't stop because it doesn't really matter which classes they use to examine the concepts, the concept don't change, which means uh, it doesn't really matter which classes they use. What is very important for you is for you to understand the concept because I had students sometimes complaining that they asked us one thing. There was only one thing in the exam and I saw the exam and it wasn't one thing. It, it was just one solution, right? So it's very much normal because uh, I know students sometimes you go to question number one, it claps you a little bit and you're like, okay, let me leave that and let me go to question number two. And then it says, using the knowledge from question number one and they're like, oh no, it happens. Provide a YAML class diagram that you can represent these basic requirements. Each image has one property. Okay, let's start here. Uh, okay, for an image library, the library will store information about the images like size, owner, date, and so on, and not the images themselves. Perfect. Each image is one property for the moment, which is the size in megabytes, for example, 3.56, which is a double or a float, which one you want, whichever one you want to use. There should be, there also should be what? A container holding a set of images. Now, using this, provide a UMO class diagram that can represent these basic requirements clearly indicating any relationships if necessary. I want you guys to go and try out this same question on the 2020 June paper. If it's not in your portal, I'll upload it. Um, and, try that, and try and do that question on your own. Just see how far you go. So we say the basic, the first thing you want to do whenever you're answering these questions is identify your objects or your classes. Number one, the entities, each image, boom, image becomes a class. I know I've got a class called image because we are talking about images. There's one property uh, that's going to be an attribute within the class, which is fine. There also should be a container. This becomes a class, a list becomes a class. And we said anything else that writes or reads from a file becomes a class. And that's how you become, that's how you build your solution. So really I know that I've got an image, I've got a container, which is going to be a class. And that's it. So it's a very simple solution. An image which has one property. You should include a function to add an image to the container holding all the images, you can do that. However, you do not need to indicate constructors or destructors and no getters or setters are required. They simply want to test. Is your mind functioning properly? Do you know what needs to happen here? So that's easy because all you want to do is you are saying, I've got an image uh, class and I've got a container. Now, when it comes to a container, let me make this a little bit smaller, right? Uh, when it comes to a container, we are talking about a list, like a QMAP or a QList or a vector, whatever you want to use. But we are saying we've got our class here, which is an image. We'll come back to this class. And we've got a container here. Let's call this um, image list. And this is going to be our class. Now, how do you achieve a container? You, you have two options. You can put the list inside the class. I prefer to just inherit from a QList or QList of type image like that i usually prefer pointers and there is my inheritance now i've got an image list right which is inheriting from a queue list of images because i'm using pointers this makes it obviously a composition a relationship because i want to delete all the images if this list is deleted right because uh, this is my image list so now i'm done it's gonna look like this so basically that's the framework. That is what you're trying to do. You get a YAML class diagram. So they say, don't put any functions, don't put any constructors. So obviously when you are drawing a YAML class diagram, your, your class, you, you put your class on the header. So it's more like drawing it like this and try to be nice here. So we've got our, our class sitting here and let's do it like that and that. And that's okay. So you've got this thing, and obviously this becomes your thingy, and then this becomes your sorry, this becomes your class image. We don't need anything in here, we don't need any functions or any constructors, so I can just leave it blank like that. 
then here's my image list and in my image list i'm doing obviously exactly the same thing so i can just redraw this maybe just make it a bit clearer uh using my cute nice lines here so this would be my yeah let's say my image list so i can just go like i'm gonna make it bigger like this so that i can write inside that's my image list like that and obviously that and like that so uh this is my image list i've got nothing here and i can put not no constructors and then i can have a function that is responsible for adding images so you have two options how do you want to add images to your list one option is you just give your class a pointer of type image and it adds it to the list or your class could be responsible for creating those image image pointers which means it gets the information required to create an image and it generates the image pointer itself. So I'm saying our function, public right class, could be, let's say, add image and it receives an image pointer, I, right? It is an image pointer. Remember when you draw a class diagram, you start with the variable name, then the type. And we can say maybe this returns a Boolean for success or fail. That's one option. Another option could be you, you want to give your function everything it needs and then it generates the image within the function. Like inside the function, then you go image equals new image and then you put the image in your list. So in that case, my function could look like this, add image and I give it the size, yes, which is a, maybe a float and it returns a boolean which means in this case my function is responsible for creating the image pointer whereas in the first case my function is being given the pointer already with of the image created created somewhere and it simply adds it to the list so basically that's how you can do it so you see it's not that complicated when it comes to creating demo class diagrams and what i love about these questions is they are always almost the same questions it's what you're always going to have a list and some entities and a list and maybe something else that tries to a file or reads to from a file and a view and sometimes a client right so basically that is how you would do this question so in some cases, they say include a client. Sometimes they say don't include a client. A client is your view, right? Where you're going to do the stuff. That's your dialogue, for instance, where you do the actual code, which will create the images and do stuff and display things. That's your client. So inside your client, obviously your client is going to have an instance of image list, right? And it will be able to create the images. So if I am to include a client in this case, what I'm saying is, let's say I've got a dialogue, right? Let's put a dialogue here just to demonstrate what I'm trying to say. Let's say we've got a dialogue here um, that is going to be responsible for doing the image functionality here. I don't know whatever happens there. Maybe add some images and do stuff. This dialogue will have a list, right? I would, I would put a list under private. So I would have under, under private here. I would have maybe my image list. So I'll go I list, which is of type image list. I don't have to put an image on a private because that will happen in the function. Then maybe I've got a function here called uh, create image, or whatever. So maybe I've got a function create image that will create the images and add an image to the list. Maybe it's a void function. So within this function, this is where I'm going to maybe ask the user to give me the size of the image and do stuff and then take that size and create the image and then take that image and call the add image function of this list and so on and so on. So you can see that my dialogue, like in this case, let me just call this my client. My client has an aggregation relationship with my image list. Do you see that? Because it contains it on the private. But at the same time, it needs to use an image. In other words, it's responsible for creating images. So one thing about association relationships is you can give them context. Like, what, how is it using it? So your client is responsible for creating the images. 
That is if I'm going with this option, right? So this would be my diagram with the client. So these relationships are just describing what you've done in the class. I've put the image list and I'm simply looking at these and saying, oh, under private, I've got an image list. It's not a pointer there for its aggregation. Oh, in this class, I've got image pointers there for its composition. So that is how I could, I could then draw the final diagram of my, um, of my solution.